joins us now. Carl, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Paul. All right, your initial reaction as you look at the scene, the images that we've been beaming out live for now, better part of three uh, news cycles, what do you think? This is outrageous. It's, it's, it's a, a huge crisis for our community because we're going to be saddled with all of the extra expenses, uh, the overcrowding, the public health challenges, as our emergency rooms are going to be overwhelmed. These people are arriving with no uh, health care. They've been traveling uh, out in the outside, uh, exposed to elements. Uh, then all of our social services will have to be uh, strained to deal with them. Uh, we don't have the housing. We're going to see an increase in homelessness. Uh, and we know that this is an invasion. This is an invasion of people not wanting to follow the rules for immigration. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I feel very bad for the people who have been duped by not only the coyotes and the cartels and the human traffickers, because they're paying like anywhere between three and four thousand dollars on the low end to eight, nine, ten thousand dollars per pop to uh, make it to the United States with with the um, uh, human traffickers. But they've been duped by Democrats. Joe Biden and the Democrat Party have dangled carrots in front of them uh, to induce them, to in, 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 incite them to come to the border and do this illegally because Democrats want the votes. They, they have no problem with a porous border. So I want to make one thing very, very clear. Um, we welcome in this country over a million legal immigrants every single year. So any news network, any politician that says that people who want to secure border are you know, anti-immigrant or racist, it is absolutely offensive to the American people who've been so generous, and we will continue to be generous in offering asylum and welcoming legal immigrants every year. But Paul, there has to be rules. There has to be a vetting process. We have to have a secure border. We have a right, okay, with all the generosity that we have put out for welcoming immigrants each and every year. I think we have a right to do it our way and to do it in an orderly fashion. Uh, one other thing I, I want to point out is that these people are being referred to as asylum seekers, uh, migrants, refugees. No, they are illegal immigrants. Let's be quite clear. They are also liars. And again, I, 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 I say that knowing that they've been told to lie by the cartels and the human traffickers. But these people all want jobs. Uh, they all just want to come to the United States, and I understand that. I get that. A million people legally do that every year. However, for you to show up and say, I'm politically persecuted, when you're not, that is offensive because there are real people around the world that are persecuted, and we have a process for them. But this is being abused. So for the media to refer these people as refugees, oh, please. I mean, it's like saying that these people are goats. They're not. They're human beings, and they just so happen not to be following the, the rules, the law to get into the United States properly. So I think we have to speak with clarity. I think we have to explain to the American people what is happening and how generous we already are, because this policy needs to be changed. We need to secure the border. Uh, and it is infuriating because the victims are both taxpayers on this side of the border and the people who were, who were duped into coming uh, uh, by virtue of the, the cartels and the human traffickers. I asked Bill Wells this question in the earlier hour. He did not rise to the bait. Perhaps you will. Sarah Jacobs uh, released a statement from her office saying this is all on Republicans' hands, the, their inability to come up with uh, it. And <laughs> Oh, isn't that, 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 that rich coming from a multi-billionaire heiress <laughs> who lives in an ivory tower? Hey, Sarah Jacobs, are you going to take a couple uh, migrants into your guest bedroom and bathe them and clothe them and feed them and take care of their health care? No, you're going to expect us, the little people, to pay the price. You know, Paul, this weekend and into the next several weeks, if you've got to go to the emergency room, good luck. Take a seat. Good luck. You're going to have a long line. And remember, none of these individuals have health insurance. So when they do use our public health system, we're paying for that in higher costs of health care. So, Sarah Jacobs, you are absolutely out of touch, untethered from reality. You're offensive. Uh, you have the audacity as a multi-billionaire heiress to sit here and weigh in on this stuff. Look, granddaddy bought you a congressional seat. Go to your cocktail parties and just leave us alone. I think, I think your contributions to public service will be quite limited. Uh, you know, and we get... If you push back against what is happening at the border, you're deemed um, you're racist first, then you ha lack humanity, this, that, and the other thing. And it's almost, is our, 
as you were mentioning, we're, we're a very welcoming nation, and yet, if we say, whoa, this is an invasion, you, this is an army of women and children and old men and old, they're the pawns in this game being marched forward by diabolical forces, and people don't recognize that. And if you, if you raise an alarm, you're hit over the head with being uncaring. So how do you win this? Well, you, 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 I think, have to uh, make those points that I made at the very beginning very clear. And I think Republicans, um, they're, they're not really good at messaging and communications. Let's just say that. Uh, they are not um, uh, messaging on this. They're not passionately caring for these people. Because I do care for the people that I see out there, uh, the families. Um, the, 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 the young adult men, um, I'm very apprehensive about those individuals. I know that they're probably trying to support families, but others, who knows? What sort of record do they have? Um, I, I think there are all sorts of risks associated with not having any vetting process for who comes into this country. But uh, if, this, if, if this crisis can easily be fixed literally with a stroke of a pen, Paul, all that Biden has to do is restore the Remain in Mexico policy, and he still has the ability to declare a public health emergency under Title 42 because now it's not COVID. It's literally people dying in uh, the back of uh, semi-truck uh, containers, right. uh, people uh, going on high-speed chases. Me, and so we have the ability to change this, and it needs to be done by our politicians if let we me, put pressure on them. Just quickly, Carl, because we're out of time, if you can make yeah. it as short as possible. How does this affect our homeless situation on the streets here in San Diego? <laughs> Look, um, you would have thought Tar Gloria has already uh, done the worst possible thing he can do for homelessness. I don't know what is worse, housing first or an open border. Both of these failed Democrat policies have led to epic numbers of, of people on our streets uh, and the suffering and the misery. Uh, and so by every count, the Democrats just simply refuse to do anything about the homeless problem, whether it's the housing first scam uh, that they've been running for 15 years in California. Uh, that no other state is really doing, uh, which is why our homelessness is up and theirs is down, or the open border. Both of these things do contribute absolutely to homelessness. All right, Carl. Uh, thank you for spending time with KUSI. I, unfortunately, this is a conversation we're going to have to have for the foreseeable future, I think, until yeah. uh, until at least 2024, I bet. All right, Carl yeah, DeMille. We'll be on.